What's up guys, my name is PB and let me not waste your time. Today we're going to be making the RCT thread that I teased earlier. I'm gonna lie to you guys, it's a bit fusion intensive. So if you're not good at fusion, then this tutorial might punish you BTA belt to ass, but I promise that I'll take things slow and steady. So there shouldn't be any mix up if there is, just tell me in the comments or you can reach me on Discord. Also I have a server link in the description where you can watch me stream, ask questions and also interact with my community. As enough yapping, let's start editing. To make the actual RCT effect, we are going to be using these clips here. I think I only need the two, so I'll delete that. First drag your first clip up, hold down alt and drag up. That's how you make a duplicate. So what we want to do is once we've dragged it up and we've made a duplicate, we want to freeze it on the start frame. So just right click and uh you're going to click on change clip speed and then you're going to click on freeze frame like that so once you freeze framed it then the clip shouldn't move then you move that back uh i'll move mine back six or no, seven frames and you cut it at that point like that drag that back down so now it should be frozen for a while and then it comes back out we're going to be working on this clip itself next thing you want to do is to maybe make a cc bin for your compound clips and then compound clip this maybe transition name it transition or whatever you want then open that in fusion like that you should be good nice so next thing we're going to do is we're going to mask it out that's what the whole transition is about it uses the rct rectangle mask which is why it has the name rct transition it's not very complicated the logic behind this is that we want the clip to start out as one sorry we want the clip to start out as zero and then it will go up to one that's the logic behind this we'll add some other effects to like polish and make it look cleaner but to accomplish this you can simply go at the beginning keyframe this at zero and then go to the end keyframe this at one and you have your rct effect here but uh i do things a little bit differently i use anim curves i'll have a longer video about that in the description but you can just follow along for now and watch that video later so what i usually do is i right click on the value i want to modify which is the width here and then i just go to modify with anim curves it will open up the modifiers tab just click on that and then this is the actual anim curves modifier that we're going to be working with first thing we want to do is set our source to duration then our curve to custom because we're going to be modifying the curve by ourselves this isn't too scary it's just the same curve that you'd see in the spline editor over here but we're not using keyframes we're going to be using this instead so the offset starts this is our starting value our offset it's zero right now we want to keep that at zero because we want the animation to start at zero and we want it to end at the value of one this scale is going to be added to our offset over the duration of the clip because our source is set to duration that's the logic behind this this doesn't shouldn't make a whole lot of sense if you're seeing this for the first time i'm going a bit fast but i promise the video that i've linked in the description i'll uh tag it there anim curves modifier tutorial it's very insightful it's very helpful for this kind of animation but if you're not going to be doing this method you don't need this method i'll show the perks of it later but if you don't think that this method is right for you then you can use keyframes it's the same logic and we'll continue on from there but for those that are interested let's quickly overview uh how we can use the graphs to make this animation a little bit better and you might be wondering pb what animation you haven't done anything <laughs> the animation is already sorted it's right here so if i play you can see that it animates by itself really really cool we can use the graph to make this a little bit smoother those of you that did the keyframe route you can make your graph something like this to make it a little bit smoother you can see it's fast but it's also smooth because it has this like uh gradient interpolation here you can maybe loosen this a bit so that's not so fast and yeah you get something like that but it looks stiff kind of i don't really like how it's looking now so one thing that i'm going to do to polish that is i'm going to go back to the tools i'm going to go to the settings and i'm going to enable motion blur these settings are fine they don't really need to be too high something like this looks a little bit smoother just a little bit smoother i like this so i told you that i was going to mention the perks of the anim curves uh this is the main perk of it it starts and it animates into the next clip like that, right? But because we're using anim curves and not fixed keyframe, we can actually stretch this out like this. And because we're using anim curves modifier and not fixed keyframes, the animation will stretch 
to fit our new comp length. That's the perks of anim curves and why I love anim curves so much. I think I'll reduce this to six frames. Yeah, there we go. So that's basically why I use anim curves in basically all my animation, all my plugins. It's anim curves, anim curves, anim curves all day, every day. So if you have this already, you're basically done. But we're going to be adding some effects to enhance it. First thing we're going to add is an outline. So to do that, we're going to follow standard procedure. What you want to do is add a bitmap in here. Bitmap will, will take this uh, value here and plug it into our bitmap. So if you preview this, you can see that uh, our animated rectangle has been converted to a black and white image. That's cool. We're going to use this as a mask for a background. You know what the background is? Solid, normal background. Maybe we can change this to red. Once we plug the bitmap into the mask and we preview the... Uh, now we have a red bar that animates the same as our effect from last time. If we drag this background onto the... Uh, merge it's on top but what we actually want is for it to be under like this so it's now under the effect from before and where the actual outline comes in is we add after the background an erode dilate node like this and we crank this up a little bit that's where we start getting the outline i don't want this to be too strong it's up to you. It's creative freedom at the end of the day. I think I'll also change the color to white because white is better. And if you find yourself like struggling to get a look that you want, you can also add effects in between the background and the euro dilate. So, or even after the euro dilate, so that your uh yeah your outline isn't too strong. Maybe you can uh, go to the bitmap and add some soft edge like this you know make it into like a shadow or something you can get really creative with this i'm just going to teach the basics of it and uh one other thing that we can add after the merge is a drop shadow to add some depth and compositing to this it makes it look a bit more professional i don't know if that's really how i would word it but it uh it helps a bit you know so we'll just add the drop shadow like that and if you play back you should have a yeah this is looking good already i like what i'm seeing so far but it still needs some work the next thing we're going to add is the flash that i had in the original version of this so to add the flash we're going to first drag in an adjustment clip like that and cut it maybe here then we want to lengthen it to maybe five frames or four. I'll go with four frames. And best practices for DaVinci Resolve, change the comps, like change the color and name of your comps so that you don't forget them. This is habit at this point for me, but like uh, you guys should make a habit as well. It's really good for, for improving your timeline, making it look more neat. So to do the actual flash we're going to add in a brightness contrast node and for my keyframe people i'm just going to quickly explain the logic beginning of the animation you want to turn up the brightness all the way up end of the animation keyframe that obviously and then end of the animation keyframe it gwim, back down to zero like that so i'm going to be using anim curves obviously so uh, i'm just going to add the anim curves go to modifiers tab and at the beginning we want to add one but this time we're actually reducing from one to zero. So we want to set this to minus one, sorry, so that it goes back down to zero at the end. Our source will be duration and our graph will be custom as per usual. This time we're going to have, uh, yeah, we're going to have a similar graph as before. We don't want to make it too tight. Uh, shouldn't really be tip to tip. Uh, there should be some space between the you know, keep things nice and civil. There we go. Now we have a flash animation. If we play our clip, that's looking a lot better already. Okay. So there's more stuff that we can add to this actually. I think next I'm going to add a... What should I add? Um, okay, I'll add a zoom and a shake. Okay. So this is where stuff kind of gets interesting because... Uh, you should know by now that I'm not going to use keyframes. I abhor keyframes. Keyframes are disgusting and dirty and nobody uses them. 
that was a joke okay so we're going to drag in an adjustment clip for our zoom and we're going to cut it here because we want it actually to zoom in up to here and then it will zoom out so we're going to first do the zoom in then we'll copy it and uh, drag it over here when we're and reflect it when we're doing the zoom out so to do the zoom in i don't do it the traditional way traditional way you do it with a keyframe is to at the beginning it's zoomed normally with a transform and at the end you zoom in uh, blah 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 you understand there's lots of tutorials on that i'll probably include that in the description but like i'm going to teach you the fast way to do the zoom in so that you're not wasting time constantly so you're going to be using these plugins quick zoom and also quick shake when we get to the quick part they're made by me i'll offer them in the description the quick zoom is actually version zero so there's no ui or anything I'll explain how to use this, but if you want to do zooms the traditional way, the normal way, I'll include a video for that in the description below. For quick zoom here, what we're going to do is first set the zoom point. Now, what I like to do is I like my zoom point. I'm modifying it uh, in the inspector to be between the eyebrows when I'm zooming in on somebody's face. That's just best practices that I've seen. And we don't want it to start at zero because when it starts at the size of zero, a scale of zero, there's nothing in here. And then it just zooms out like that. No, we want it to start at one. And then desired scale is the scale at the end of the animation. So at the beginning, it's one. We want this to end at two so that it zooms into power's face like that like that just like that so uh okay two is a bit strong let's make that 1.4 i think yeah much better and for the graph i'm going to have something like this where it's kind of like an inverted uh upward running exponential and yeah i think everything else is good that's fine uh you can also have motion blur as well Oh, I'm going to remove the set end as well. Let me quickly explain this. So the start frame is the frame you want the zoom to start. So it's set to zero and the end frame is the frame you want the zoom to end. So right now the zoom is ending at frame 10 because I set the end to frame 10. I didn't set the start to frame zero. It's starting automatically from the beginning of the clip. But if I remove the set end, then I'm not setting the end anymore. So it's going to end automatically at the end of the clip. And this is really powerful because if I reduce the length of my clip or I increase the length of my clip, the animation will scale to fit just like the Anim Curves modifier that I showed you earlier. Once you've done that, you should have your zoom just like that. So now we're going to duplicate this and make the zoom out animation. First thing you're going to want to do is invert the uh, scales. So we want this actually to start around 1.4. It doesn't have to be exactly 1.4, maybe like 1.35. And then it will end, desired scale, it will end at 1. So now we have a zoom out like this. You can see that the graph looks a bit weird. The graph animation is actually at the end of the composition where we want it to be at the beginning. So we just invert this graph like this and we get this smooth, consistent animation. Because if you go to this graph, it's going up like this and if you go to this graph it's coming from the bottom and it's going up and setting like this so you get this s shape that's really good for your animation smooth consistent motion really really good for your animations i can't express that enough it will shorten the zoom here and we'll just play that yeah i think that looks really good boom looks really flat now because there's no motion blur but you can just go to the zoom and enable motion blur like that I'm not, i don't think should i okay let me see what it looks like with motion blur uh this will render like crap oh my god boom yep that looks really really good yeah i really like that that looks so much better with the motion blur yeah much better but now we could use a shake so we're just going to drop in the adjustment clip and set that there maybe we'll shape set the shake to be a bit longer let's just color this maybe purple then we'll rename this as shake just like that best practices uh drop the shake in like that and 
for the quick shake the settings are pretty simple i'll make a video on this itself it has a ui this is in version zero this is version one there's a lot of stuff here but i'm just going to quickly run through it because i'm running out of time so we're just going to set the displacement 2.12 if you want to dedicate a video on how to use quickshake because it's really powerful i'm just going to quickly mention this but you can open up your power bins and drag your presets with your settings in here and rename them so maybe something like twitch shake let me just quickly market this real quick maybe something like twitch something like that you and you can have access to them across all your davinci projects so if you want you can get this as well link in the description i probably will be making a dedicated video on that but not now so if you want that tell me about it in the description but let's quickly go through the settings before we uh lose ourselves in the marketing and stuff so direction i'm going to set that to two shake rotation i don't want that to be too high i mean 1.5 i don't want the shake to rotate too much shake strength 0.12 is always good for subtle shakes maybe 0.15 and for the motion blur i'll reduce this to 1 1 10 so it's not too strong shake speed maybe 4.7 is okay i'm calling these numbers out like crazy but i really don't know if it will look good let's see um oh wow that is rendering so slow i'll skip over this fantastic and yeah that looks a lot that looks a lot better actually i like this i like this a lot this is looking smooth and there you have it that's how to do the rct effect obviously you can tweak what i've taught you so far maybe add some stronger zoom harder shakes you can use keyframes if you want uh follow the links in my description if you're confused about the anim curves and you were just following along no shame in that we all learn so uh links in my description for videos that will teach you anim curves teach you how to do zooms with shakes and keyframes i'll have everything in the description below i was just overviewing how to get this effect i wouldn't really call this a tutorial i've been pb and this has been awesome goodbye